Prague's really going to the dogs. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a joke because Prague's already gone to the dogs. Proggers love dogs. Czechs love dogs. Massive dog ownership here. Dogs are allowed just about everywhere, including, yes, sometimes the cinema. During the pandemic lockdown, when people really aren't supposed to even really leave their homes, one of the things that you are allowed to do is, of course, go walk your dog. Prague is a great walking city, not just for people, but dogs. So we're going to talk about walking your dog in Prague today with Karen O'Rourke, who runs the Dog Walks Prague website, has written a book on dog walks in the city and in the rest of the country, and is basically just a massive dog fan. Hello, Karen O'Rourke. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. And thank you to have me to your show, Derek. Thank you. Of course, of course. Well, perhaps I should say, row, row, row. And maybe that's that's more familiar. I'd like to thank Karen for talking to me today. And I'd like to thank everybody out there for listening. A city is much more than just a collection of buildings. It's a location, it's a history, it's a culture, it's ideas and ideals, and a city is also, most importantly, the people in it. This is Prague Times, the podcast that takes a look at the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. With more than a thousand years of history, there's a lot to talk about. We'll talk about the past of Prague, but we'll also talk about the city as it is today, future plans for the city, and much more. It's Prague then, Prague now, and Prague later. And this is Prague Times. So, Karen, you are Scottish, is that correct? That's right, Derek, yes. I'm from Glasgow. From Glasgow. How, how'd you come to Prague? What made you go, hey, is Prague like sunny weather compared to Glasgow? Or what, what made you come here? That's, a, that's actually quite a difficult question. It's just I'm, I'm Scottish, yes, but I mm. kind of see myself more as a European I've, mm. um, I lived for over 20 years in France as well before coming to the Czech Republic. So I know the Cairngorms as much as I know Pyrenees and uh, the mm-hmm. Vosges Mountains, as much as I know all the countryside in the Czech Republic from right. north to south, east to west. So yes, I'm, yeah, I'm a huge hiker. I've, I've hiked all over France and um, the Alps, the Pyrenees, the Vosges. And uh, yes, wow. it, whenever I can be outside, I'm, I'm outside. So of course, you, uh, you mentioned on your website, Dog Walks Prague, that uh, every day, of course, you have to walk the dogs because they it's hard to potty train them on a toilet. So they, they have to go out. Uh, but I assume you're doing more than just, hey, go do your business. You're going out. You're, you're exploring the city. You're exploring the countryside. You're exercising them. You're having a whole experience with these uh, uh, pets of yours. I really believe in the benefits of nature and uh, mm-hmm. dog walking and hiking are just two very compatible activities. So, uh, yeah, it's my passion. It's when I'm not working at my desk, which um, at the moment is a good part of the day, but I feel that (laughs) you always have time to be outside and that's how I like to spend my free time uh, with my dogs roaming around. And it's allowed me to become acquainted with all the history, the writers, Mm -hmm. all the different beautiful areas in Prague and uh, beyond. And of course, it's a treat for the dogs as well. Lots of things to smell and secretly eat. Indeed, indeed. They never say no. Uh, so how many dogs have you got? What kind? I'm a big fan of Irish setters. Uh-huh. So I, ha- I have two of them. They're probably born mm. and bred, and uh, they're my companions, my outdoor companions. Now, on your website, you mentioned that there are scientific reports that suggest, or maybe even uh, stronger than suggest, that pet ownership and dog ownership specifically is beneficial, not just mentally, but even physically to humans. It's strange, you know, during this um, era that we've been uh, living in over the past year, lots of people are reporting feeling down, Mm -hmm. uh, feeling even more down. I feel that owning a dog is is beneficial for for many reasons. It gets you outside. uh, It brings you a lot of profound happiness. And also when you're walking with your dog, 
when you're hiking, you're learning endurance, you're building up perseverance, and all of these things are kind of ingredients that we've needed to stay happy recently, I think. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's actually a good yeah. point. I would always actively um, encourage people to hike. I wouldn't always actively encourage people to acquire a dog. Uh, I think being a dog owner, it's a huge commitment. Uh, it takes time and it's a lifelong commitment. But it's true that for people who enjoy spending time uh, with animals and who enjoy giving their time, it's, it's hugely beneficial. Yes, it's, it's, it's a huge ingredient to happiness. I think that sharing is a big part of why I do things. Uh, for example, that's why I started the, um, the dog walking group. Anything that I see that brings me happiness, I always want to share it with other people. Mm. And I also think that um, owning a dog, it, it's a great catalyst to humor, human interaction because I, I love dogs, but I also love people. So I, I run these group walks. They're free uh -huh. of charge and uh, people come along uh, with their dogs. And it's been a wonderful sharing activity because it, it's an activity that's very leveling. Like everyone turns up they, with their hats, their dog, their dirty boots. And basically, if, if you meet people at a cocktail party, for example, well, there, there's a thing of the past. But if you meet people at a cocktail party, you're like, where are you from? What do you do? Whereas when you're meeting people on a dog walking activity, the first conversations are about a shared passion. Oh, where does your dog come from? Uh, uh, how old is he? Does he get on with other females and things? And, and actually, it's been wonderful because um, everyone feels immediately comfortable sure. because they can speak about their dog and everyone's on the same level. And it's right. weird because uh, we've got all of these nationalities together and it's only after weeks or even months of walking with each other that you realize that um, one person is uh, a diplomat working in consular services, <laughs> another person is a, an artist, someone else is doing a PhD in economy and it takes us months actually to get round to what would be considered basics as that so everyone feels very comfortable and it's it's very leveling and sharing is all around the nature where we are what we are seeing together and the dogs so mm. it's it's been lovely Uh, I have two friends who have a dog. Well, this is before uh, the pandemic and everything. We were hanging out and they said, oh my God, have you seen this dog walks book? Now, my wife and I, we don't have a dog, but they know I used to be a tour guide here and I really like walking around and I geocache and, and so I like exploring the city. And I said, no, I've never heard of it. And they just love the book. They can't get enough of it. And so one of them, my friend Donna said, you should contact this woman and see if she'll talk to you on the podcast because it's a great book and everybody should have it. <laughs> that's, that's lovely to hear. I'm, I'm touched. I'm touched. I've had quite a few people contacting me with very positive feedback, but I don't realize how many people have the book really. And, um, mm. and I'm very touched that it's helping people and they're getting pleasure from it. What made you want to do that? Is it just you thought, my God, I've seen so many of these cool walks uh, and you kept notes or was this during this group? You thought, you know, these are the standard walks that I, I take people on. You know what? I should put this all down in a book. Actually, there were two reasons for me writing that book. The first one was to share with a maximum number of people the walks that I know and that have brought me great joy. Mm. Um, and a lot of people won't venture out on their own, just with their dog, on a walk, which is a pity. But thanks to the QR codes that I put in the book, they mm. can just activate a navigator and follow the walk without the fear of getting lost. So that was one of my purposes, was to bring my walks to a larger number of people who don't necessarily want to join a group walk, but who would love to discover the Czech countryside on their own with their dog and don't dare to do so because they feel that you need to be accompanied when you're walking or uh, they're afraid to get lost or, or, mm -hmm. or something. It, so it was to facilitate that. 
that. And also my uh, original idea was to, in some way, through the sale of the books, donate to shelters and animals uh, in need. What I, one thing I wanted to ask you was, I, as I scroll through this, I see the very first one, and this is this Prokopak Paradise in Smichov, um, Prague 5. Why was that the first one? It's probably one of my favorites. So I have three walks in Prokopak. They're kind of like off the beaten track, if you like. They don't mm-hmm. follow any, any official hiking trails. Uh, they're just dog walks that actually my dogs have um, invented because uh, <laughs> it's, it's often my dogs who choose the paths. And they're beautiful walks because they combine everything. Uh, there's always a viewpoint, sometimes several. There's always a water source for the dogs to drink. And there's always a bit of clambering to build up endurance. Right, sure. So, so the dogs are the dogs are co-authors. They they should get a cut. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> At the top of Prokopsky Oduli, there's a wonderful, wonderful, huge flat field um, mm. where they're just about to introduce um, wild horses, uh, wow. much in the way, yeah, much in the way that in Milovice, I don't know if you know, but it was an ex-military training ground and mm. it's like a project to preserve the biodiversity through grazing and um, the Czech Republic are pioneers in, in this and... Um, mm. They've introduced in Milovice Exmoor ponies and uh, bisons and mm. actually aurochs, which were extinct, and they've been regenerated by science and uh, uh, genetics, and they're back, and they're in Milovice, and that's another beautiful dog walk round, round this um, big fenced structure. Mm. Uh, it's a big, flat dog walk. Uh, just like in Prokopsky Udoli. Uh, so we have, we're about to have the same thing in Prokopsky Udoli. They're going to be introducing wild horses because through grazing, it maintains the biodiversity. And that's one of the wonderful things about Prague as well is the, the biodiversity. About one third of Prague's space within the confines of the greater city limits is is green space. I'm, I'm not in the slightest surprised. It's, it's wonderful. I I also love walking around uh, Sibulka and uh, Motol forest area. Although it's not the most beautiful forest you can find, there are more beautiful forests in the area, but it's definitely, in terms of biodiversity, it's absolutely incredible. You can find wild teasel and uh, chamomile, and it's absolutely amazing. Mm. Uh, And there's free access to all of the wonders of nature for everyone in Prague, all, all at our doorstep. But I notice you find a lot of uh, interesting other things, uh, little villages, tunnels, ruins, uh, waterfalls, volcanoes, extinct volcanoes in the area. Like It's one of those crazy things that you kind of forget, especially I think those of us who live in the city, many of us don't leave. I mean, obviously during lockdown, nobody leaves the city. Even in normal times, you know, you get you get stuck in your ways and, and you don't really explore the city or the environs or the rest of the country very much. But there is a lot here. I mean, I know there's a lot everywhere, but this country seems, for such a small country, it seems to have quite a wealth of really interesting things to go see. Absolutely. And you don't have to go far out of Prague to feel that you're climbing up onto rocky plateaus. And there's a beautiful walk in uh, Lochovice also, which is just 30 minutes from Prague. And it's around an area called uh, Pleshivetsky, Hreben. Mm. And you walk through beautiful pine forests up to a rocky plateau called the Devil's Pulpit. And you look down into Fabian's garden. Uh, Fabian is from uh, mythology. Uh, it's it's a male deity that controls the weather. Uh, ah. So 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 you need to bear that in mind when you're up there. But um, <laughs> but it's it's really wonderful, and we have all of these majestic viewpoints uh, on our doorstep. It's it's incredible. We have more castles and chateaus per square kilometer than any other country in Europe. 
Yes, indeed. There's one little rune that I love. It's in the middle of um, Masha Lake. Uh, it's called Mishlin. And there's always a legend attached to a place in and around Prague. That's what I love about it as well. It's, so it's a little fortress, a rune of a fortress in the middle of uh, Masha Lake. And uh, it's um, attached to the legend of a cruel knight whose um, fortune and castle was ravaged by my to <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah uh, and and everywhere i go i pick up all these snippets of information and it all fits together like a jigsaw because while right. i was hiking in kokojin i came across um Nebeski, the poet who was one of the lovers of bojena nemsova so mm-hmm. then it leads me to read about um Niemcova, which then leads me to uh, Ratiborzice to discover the countryside and the landscape there. It, it's like all interconnected and uh, that's what I love about hiking and mm-hmm. culture in general. Yeah, it's, it's always very exciting when you're you're like, oh, I'm I'm here, and then you discover something. Like my wife and I, I think we were geocaching uh, over off of Karuni, uh, behind where Vinohradsky Pivovar is, and we're on this kind of weird, you know, it's this weird street of small, ha- low houses, but they all have uh, gardens, they all have yards. It's a street that bisects the block. It's kind of an unusual uh, arrangement for streets, and we're just walking along there, and oh, there's a plaque. Let's go read it. Oh, Carl. Chopik and his brother lived here. Oh, well, I'll be darned. What a, what a treat to just come across that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a wonderful thing about Prague. I, I used to get off the tram at uh, Klamovka uh, on a regular basis. And that's how I found out about uh, Lenka Reinerova uh, because of a plaque on the house where she was born. And then it leads me to read some of the work of the different authors and find out where the impact they had, how they shaped right. the history of the Czech Republic walking around is the it's the best yes absolutely it's it's abs- I think it's absolutely it's the best way to get to know a city or an area I mean driving is great for long distance I guess or taking trains or what have you but if you really want to to see the details there's nothing better than walking absolutely absolutely and walking with the dog is even nicer So uh, the second book will have more dog walks. And you said that a lot of it is going to be uh, about these Czech writers, especially ones that were uh, instrumental during the uh, Czech National Revival in the 19th century that sort of forged modern Czech identity. And uh, and in fact, it was out of that that came the modern Czech language and all the, the other things that we would now call modern Czech comes from that period. How much of that book is going to be focused on the writers? Only the first part, because it uh-huh. takes uh, the walk take you far and wide. For example, I have a walk focusing on my relationship with Karol Jaromir Erben uh, <laughs> because I was introduced to this writer while during a hike in Velhartice, where at the entrance to the village there stands the church where Wedding Shirts uh, was filmed, uh, one of his um, ballads, one of his poems. Basically his collection of Czech folk tales in verse was called a bouquet, a uh, Kitice. So when Kitice was made into a movie, well, it has been several times, but the latest one, Wedding Shirts, was filmed uh, with the decor of the church in Velhartice. And that's how I discovered Erben, because um, on the gable end of the church in Velhartice, there's the peeling, deteriorated facade. There's the face of the woman, and the, villager, the villagers say that this is the face of the bride in uh, uh, Erben's Bala, the wedding shirt. It's nice that the Czechs hang on to their history so much because like, the country is covered in uh, hiking trails, uh, very often color-coded. There's a red trail, there's a green trail, there's a blue trail, there's a yellow trail. Really, the whole country is just crisscrossed with them and they're really excellent and they have good maps and so on. And yet my joke is on a lot of them, you're going on that walk and then, you know, a couple kilometers later, oh, there's a pub. <laughs> a little bit later, there's another pub. So 
there's always a place to stop and get a beer and use the bathroom and this and this. But I also find on some of these sometimes there's a plaque or there's a monument or there's a little sign that just tells you a little piece of the Czech story, basically. Like a, another little puzzle piece. Now, of course, you don't have to have a dog to take these walks, obviously. No, no, no. You don't have to have a dog to uh, follow the walks. They're all family friendly. Some of them can even be done on mountain bikes. Ah. And you, you also don't have to have a dog to join our weekly walks. Well, actually, I've been scrupulously respecting all the pandemic restrictions, obviously. So the sure. walks have been punctuated by long months without walks. Sure. But several people have already joined without dogs to enjoy mm. the company of dogs and uh, sure. the other walkers. So uh, obviously you deal with uh, Jack's Cool Critters Sanctuary, which was uh, in a previous episode of Prog Times. I've donated to places like Jack B's uh, Cool Critters and sure. a place called uh, Psi Signori, uh, which is for elderly abandoned mm -hmm. dogs. And uh, one of the uh, women who joined the dog walks, uh, she's Polish and she volunteers with another shelter. So whether you're interested in finding the book for yourself because you do have a dog or you're just interested in going for walks or you'd like to be a distributor of the book, uh, check those links in the episode notes and uh, find out how to do that. And of course, how do people all sign up for your weekly dog walks? I'm admin of a, a Facebook group called Dog Walks Prague. It's not a public group because um, I'm very careful about internet security and people's rights to sure. their image. And we have photographs and I always ask people before I post the photographs if they agree. So sure. it's not a public group, but you can ask to join. And right. then I post as events each group dog walk that's going to take place with an approximate itinerary, making sure that people know how difficult it might be, uh, how right. far from Prague it would be etc cetera, etc cetera. so on a, on a typical one of these walks I leave my house and what it would have I'm home in six hours <laughs> uh, <laughs> not necessarily um, unless I get lost <laughs> I try to vary the distance from Prague so that uh -huh. people who are depending on public transport can join. That's one of the wonderful things about Prague. You can go practically anywhere. I try to vary between walks inside Prague where we would meet just outside a metro station or walks further afield. And I also vary the length of the walks. Some of my walks are only five kilometers and we can do it at a leisurely pace or on some of my walks are longer uh, 12 13 kilometers which we tend to cover at a more purposeful pace <laughs> <laughs> but i mean no one's no one's gonna overnight you're not overnighting in a village or camping or anything like that well we've already i've already organized weekends um i organized ah. a weekend called the volcano weekends where we took in uh hora sheep and uh, miloshovska we stayed overnight at pishtani at a very reasonably priced and uh, dog friendly accommodation on the lakeside so yes it's it's very variable and we've often had well we've had up to 13 different nationalities on the same walk on 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 one particular what we had uh, Dutch, Lithuanian, French, American, Czech, Estonian, and um, Belgian, and wow. uh, Argentina. Yeah, everyone speaks English to varying degrees uh, of competency, and uh, everyone's very open and welcoming, and mm. lots of friendships have resulted from the walk. So Not just between people, yeah. but also between dogs. Absolutely, because the dogs are always delighted to see each other. It's amazing. And in fact, sometimes when I go for walks on my own with my dogs, I'll open the trunk of the car and my dogs will look out to see where their friends are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, where is he? I, do they recognize each other? Some of the dogs that come back again and again? Or... So they do. They rush towards each other and mm -hmm. uh, they rush around in circles, um, delighted to see each other. And right. it's like they're catching up just like they're humans. Yeah, exactly. But with much less guile. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whether you have a dog or you don't have a dog, walking around is a great thing to do. There are plenty of tour books out there. There are plenty of websites out there, but not all of them are designed to be both human friendly and dog friendly. But Dog Walks Prague by Karen O'Rourke is. And in fact, some of the trails that are described in there were blazed by dogs themselves. And I don't know I've ever heard of a book where that's the case. I'd like to thank Karen O'Rourke, writer and author of Dog Walks Prague, and who is working on Dog Walks Prague 2, which will be released uh, when? When when is, do you think that's going to come out, maybe? I don't know. I was aiming for the end of the springtime, but I, I've got lots of work. So I, I've, I've done most of the trails. I know what I want to put in the book, but I've still got a lot of writing to do. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for speaking to me today, Ms. O'Rourke. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Derek. Thank you very much yeah again uh, check out the book uh, i know two people who have it and they just can't say enough nice things about it so as i said whether you have a dog or you don't have a dog if you're interested in this country and this city it's one of those books you just gotta have on your shelf plus all the proceeds go to good causes so don't be a jerk and buy the book <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll teach them nothing like a little guilt right <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'd like to thank her for talking to me today, and I'd like to thank all of you for listening. Thank you for listening to this episode of Prague Times. If you liked this episode, be sure to like it or share it and tell your friends. Check us out on all of our social media platforms for extra goodies as well. Until next time, this has been Prague Times. <laughs>